it's time to sit back and relax with your favorite drink and listen. The Instruction Booklet Introduction So, you want to access my website, do you? That's a mistake, but one I'm glad to help you make. It won't be easy, but if you've tracked me down to this point, you know I have what you want. And you know I'm the only way to get it. Long before you access your laptop or phone, you're going to need to send two letters. One to your first child at home. Please make sure this was your first child at home. Mistakes will most certainly upset me, and you really want me on your side in this. Ask your parents or grandparents if you don't know. I'll prefer the odd question to, well, what will happen to you if you were wrong? The second letter? Well, simply put website on the front and fix the lowest denomination postage available. Mail this letter. I'll get it. Many people owe me many favours. Next, you need to get the oldest computer you can find. Extra points if it's from parts you put together yourself. Before you sleep, plug this into a standard phone line. Don't worry if you never had to deal with the horrors of dial-up. I'll see you. I'll make sure the monitor is old, and if it doesn't make a grating hum loud enough to drown out your own breathing, then find another. Using only the installed software, Bring up a browser page and wait in front of an open window for one hour before sleeping. If all's going well, you may even catch little glimpses of me in the static and errors from the monitor. If you don't, for your sake I suggest stopping. But for mine, I say, please go on. For the next two months, if you've kept a journal, text or digital, print or tear out a page and leave it in your mailbox each time you leave the house. If I find it interesting enough, I may even give you a response back. Read it at your peril. Lastly will be the hardest step. Think long and hard about who you love the most. This can be one person or many. But the more this next step affects your life, the more favorably I'll look upon it. Many like me will ask you to kill, maim, or sacrifice the ones you love. Well, I'm not so much of a cur as to expect that. But what you must do is anything so terrible as to make them reject you completely. Something so foul and depraved that they would never think to even speak to you again. A best friend might give me a chuckle. But if you have the fortitude to find yourself an isolated wreck, wondering what your life has become, well, I'll be laughing and very curious to meet the comedian who managed that feat. Now that you've done this, how do you get to the website? How do you attain that ethereal prize you've sacrificed so much to already? <clears throat> you don't. There is no website. I know you stumbled upon this simply looking for misfortune to feed your need for entertainment. You haven't taken any steps to find me. and You are of a type that's willing to sacrifice your friends and family for a prize I've never even specified. I abhor technology. You'll never find something as petty as a website to contact me. But you have just freely told me where you live, your darkest secrets, and showed me when you sleep and outlined your schedule quite nicely. You think you have to do those steps? Oh, no, little creature. I'm already there, in your room, in your mind. I've seen the time you go to bed. I've read your diary. Oh, you wrote it. Now I know who's important to you for when I want to apply pressure, not pain. And I couldn't have gotten these if you weren't at least considering doing them. Can you honestly say you didn't? <sighs> there is a game. There are rules. And there most certainly is a prize. You're playing now. You won't find the real rules in spooky words on a computer. If you want to make this more interesting, run. Try and find others in your situation. I'd love a good dust-up instead of a boring meal. But you won't. You'll close the window and go to bed. But I have a list, and I'm working down it. One of these nights I'll get to your name. And then we truly get to play.
Instruction Booklet Rule 1. Note. All notes run under the assumption that the subject has broken Rule 0. See no evil. Though it is theoretically possible for an average citizen to be affected by the rules, this has not been directly observed. Rule. Leave all electronics unplugged after 2 a.m. Time frames. Any evening after 2 a.m. Most important during odd-numbered months. EOB. Effect of breaking. All devices capable of producing sound or images will produce reenactments of the subject committing crimes. To date, no less a crime than aggravated assault has been observed. Devices incapable of this will attempt communication in any way possible. Examples include Morse code, causing damages to surfaces and smoke signals in addition to many others. All narratives will also be of the closest subject committing major, always violent, crimes. Each viewing, listening or reading will lead to a cumulative 1% chance of committing these acts. Possible Benefits some broadcasts seem to contain messages from Entity Gamma, although these are always extremely cryptic, and as such the possible benefit does not outweigh the risk of exposure. Entity Responsible Entity Gamma Seems to be the first major way for Entity Gamma to affect players. Breaking this rule for any reason, research or otherwise, cannot be recommended. Instruction Booklet Rule 2. Rule. Do not own pets. Time frame. Consistent for players who began the game over age 16. For players under this age, any pets owned before engaging in the game will not experience these effects. E.O.B. Any pets owned by players over the age of 16 will undergo a transformation that starts with brain structure changes in the animal and ends with the total physical transformation of the animal. The animal will slowly gain intellect equivalent to a four to six year old child, though unless already able, cannot speak. Parrots, some crows and macaws have shown the ability to communicate. The animal will also have an irresistible urge to harm or kill the player. This usually manifests after the first physical transformation of the animal. A psychological effect often also accompanying breaking this rule, in which the player will continue to have feelings of attachment to the animal regardless of the animal's actions. An incomplete list of physical transformations follows. Multiple heads. Either duplicates of the animal's original head or various deformed variants on existing animals, humans included. Limbs become weaponized. This includes but is in no way limited to claws. Human-like hands or biological weapons capable of causing lethal damage at ranges of up to 30 feet. Size greatly increasing. This process is the slowest transformation, as the animal grows in a balanced fashion. While often coupled with more visually shocking transformations, it is deadly in itself. A morphous shape it tends to basically stick to the original form of the animal, but cases of entire homes being filled with biological matter is not unheard of. Possible benefits. Though unconfirmed, as players under age 18 tend not to survive long in the game, leading to the entirety of this entry being anecdotal. Rumours among the player community state that players that enter with a pet under the age of 16, well, said pet may gain the benefits of the transformation while retaining love and affection for the owner. Entity Responsible Racks, although anecdotal and disputed. Instruction Booklet Rule 3 Rule Help a Stranger Time frame Can be done on a consistent basis, but is only beneficial to players once per week. EOB None Possible Benefits Confirmed Players will become resistant to any psychological or supernatural forms of mental wear or degradation from entities or rules of the game. Additionally, once per week this will force any entity actively attacking the player 
to give a warning of no less than five minutes before the attack. This warning may not come in an obvious form, but it will be given. Entity responsible. Schutz. While the common theory is that Schutz is a benevolent entity, further research is required. Instruction booklet, rule four. Rule. Don't go out in the daylight. Time frame. From the first moment of starting the game till second year playing. EOB. Going out during daylight hours will have several detrimental effects on the player. While nighttime may be more obviously dangerous, for the first two years it is actually preferable to having a daytime schedule. First, all doors in daytime will have a 2% chance of sending the player to an unknown location. To date, no players have come back to give a description. Second, an entity known unofficially as Tripwire will follow the player. This entity is wearing a cable-knit sweater that's been traced to a design popular in 1920, and a pair of shredded dress slacks. At a distance, it appears to be human, but from the statements of players who've had face-to-face -face encounters, it's composed of a slithering mass of hair-thin wires. It will use these wires to set up various traps to harm the player, or cause the player other harm, such as making it appear they're causing damage via wires attached to the player. Astute players will be able to avoid these, and him, but this requires constant vigilance. As the player spends more time in the daylight, the attempts by Tripwire will change from psychologically to physically damaging and life-threatening. Last, the player will experience extreme euphoria and happiness in natural light. This is a severe detriment to players, as it will make them more susceptible to events and entities in the game. Possible benefits. Successive days spent out of daylight will have a slight negative effect on the player's mental state. It will also condition the player's mind against the events and entities in the game. Players will also notice a very rapid paling of the skin after successive days without daylight. While this goes away with the first exposure to daylight, the paling of the skin is surface veins moving deeper within the body giving players resistance to physical trauma incurred in the game and otherwise. Entity responsible, Jaina. Instruction booklet rule 5. Rule, build a machine. Time frame, within the first four months of playing the game. EOB. Each machine will be a unique creation of the player making it. If you have a natural affinity for building electronics, clockwork, or other fine motor skill requiring arts, will find their machines work in a more effective fashion. During the first four months of the game, a level of paranormal energy will begin to build around the player's home. If left unchecked, this will result in a paranormal event that has yet to produce a surviving player. The event cause can be any other penalty for any other rule violation but it's amplified to an unsurvivable extent. The player will have dreams indicating steps required to build the machine. They will be cryptic and usually require some amount of personal sacrifice, but if followed correctly, will produce a machine capable of filtering the latent paranormal energy. It is recommended to write the dreams down immediately, as they have no supernatural means of staying with the player. The machine will stop the paranormal event, and instead produce a deformed simulacrum of the player. The higher the player's mechanical skill, and the closer they follow the dream instructions, the weaker and more deformed the homunculus will be. Failing to kill the copy will result in the previously mentioned paranormal event taking place. Possible benefits? None, really. The machine is essentially the source and solution to the problem, almost like something wants to make a point. Entity Responsible, Entity Gamma. Rule 6. Sleep with one eye open. Time frame. Starts one year after starting the game. Training beforehand is highly suggested. Operative notes. Personal experience shows two eyes open works just as well. To be honest, I think that anyone who says they keep one eye open is full of, well, you know, 
EOB. Starting one year after the start of the game, the player will begin to attract diminutive entities commonly referred to as marrow sprites. These entities are harmless when the player is in any way aware, but when sleeping or otherwise indisposed, the marrow sprites will attack. Their claws produce a numbing agent and a heavy emulsifier, allowing them to open a player, remove marrow and patch the player up. Over a long enough time frame, this leads to symptoms similar to advanced osteoporosis, combined with a severely reduced white blood cell count, and if left untreated can lead to the collapse of yellow marrow holding bones. Possible Benefits The possibility of capturing and using a marrow sprite in a medical capacity is currently being attempted. All experiments to date have ended with the marrow sprite escaping, or the death of the subject. Entity Responsible Rax. Rule 7. Don't work security. Time frame. Only applicable to players aged 28 to 35 and 60 to 75. Reasons unknown. Players not representing the age demographics will not be affected. EOB. Assuming the player is in the appropriate age range, Working any job deemed security, from night watchman to crossing guard, will attract lesser entities to the player. Most often these entities take the form of humanoids, aged 12 to 25, with skin that hangs from their bodies in loose folds. Commonly known as peons, they have black voids or mouths which consistently excrete a weak poison capable of inducing flu-like symptoms. In approximately 95% of cases, these entities will be hostile, and if unobserved by humans other than the player, will attack the player until destroyed. Each peon possesses slightly more strength than their size or deformity would imply, but can be killed by most means a normal human can, excepting suffocation and dissolution in acid. Highly basic substances still cause harm. Possible benefits. While not easy to deal with, the peons are excellent training for dealing with other aggressive entities, and as they only attack a player while working, it's highly suggestive players that are able to, to break this rule in order to work on the more physically demanding parts of the game. As a side note, some players report some entities of various form, from elf light to masses of steel barbs with a core of flesh that will come to the player for aid, treating them as their job would indicate. These reports are purely anecdotal, but further research into this avenue is underway. Entity Responsible, Janus. Rule 8. Help a player. Time frame. Any after player has been involved in the game for over 10 years. EOB, none. Possible Benefits. Should a player willingly risk their life to save another known player, they will receive some form of major physical benefit that comes with the cost of appearing intimidating, disgusting, pathetic or otherwise undesirable. Partial list of examples. Extremely resilient skin that cracks and releases blood and pus consistently. Requires long-term antibiotics to avoid infection. Physical strength in excess of 20 average humans, coupled with asymmetrical, painful growth of the player. Intellect surpassing any known scientific mind, at a cost of atrophy to the limbs. Beneficial traits of both animals and mythical creatures, requiring extremely altered diets to deal with the biological resource drain. Entity responsible, Schutz. Instruction booklet, player 001. The following is a series of blog posts by a player of the game. Notable for being one of the worst examples of total game failure that has been reliably observed and recorded. The player's blog and identity were scrubbed, and his personal effects purchased via auction for further study. Results are pending. March 4, 2016 oh, Times like this, I wish I had more than two followers. Between you and me and the light post, all that grew a fucking tongue last night, I might add, I've started taking double that, 
nothing. I'm still either completely screwed over or shit house rat smoking bath salts instead. I ate. Every joint hurts. I get up with no energy no matter how long I sleep. I think I need some fresh air and daylight, but that's a no-go. That thing is always out there now. I swear that sound it makes is just to screw with me. I've seen it move silently from rooftop to rooftop, leaving long streamers of wire just to let me know it could attack me at any moment. I've started looking now, though, for anything that can help me. But, well, every time I think i found a lead, it's always that, just that thing trolling me. Oh, seems like such a petty way of putting it, but I guess it fits. I'm going to try a couple of weird ideas tonight. I'll update everyone soon. March 28th, 2016. Can't go back to my house. Not now, not ever. Everything's living in it now. They sliver on the walls and watch me, waiting for a chance to grab me. They can't do anything with the lights off, though, so that's something I should remember. Trying to find out more didn't go as planned. I met someone from Reddit who said they'd been doing this for years and could help me. Well, I was late. I don't know why I didn't leave a couple of hours earlier, but by the time I got to the alley he wanted to meet in, he was an inside-out husk. Those little fairy things, I'm sure of it. They're why my sinuses bleed from snorting Ritalin. But even only sleeping a few hours every three or four days, I can feel it. A slow draining of my strength. The hotel isn't safe anymore. Those slow things are here now, too. And I'm noticing myself losing pieces of time. I don't know how much longer I can take this. April 24th, 2016. I got 28 people killed last night. Not a damn thing I could do about it. I've been sleeping in a transient camp, trying to nurse a couple of broken fingers and toes. Not much money to buy uppers anymore, or eat. I stay in a small ragged tent during the day and try to find anything I can to survive at night. But that pressure keeps building. I started grabbing my head and I heard a loud, wet pop. The pressure was gone, but I heard screaming. The creature was eight foot tall and looked like a walking wound. It was covered in broken glass and metal shards. It stopped its casual butchery to jam any pointed or sharp object into itself, heedless of the pain. It spoke constantly in a language I didn't understand. All my fellow transients tried to run, but they screamed in pain and clutched their feet about thirty feet outside the campsite. I curled into a ball until I heard the noises stop. A dragging, lumbering gait makes its way to my tent. The creature speaks in a language I do understand. Your fault. May 1st. 2016. I'm done. Those bone-gnawing things have sucked so much of the life out of me, I shattered my wrist throwing a brick through the window of this gas station. No matter, though, I traded my cash and supplies for painkillers. I have a feeling this is going to hurt. I'm sitting behind the counter in a pile of propane tanks, fireworks, and lighter fluid. The slug things find me every night now. And I'm done. One of them finally touched me yesterday. Oh, the festering painful wound it left cemented my decision. They're closing in now. Well, they aren't all that bright, but God, they are persistent. To anyone who reads this, I'll tell you all I know. Fire usually works. Trust no one. Figure things out. Don't run. Brawn only works when brains can't. And that's it. A year of being in the middle of this, and that's as much help as I can be. It's kind of sad I'll never get the chance to unravel this crap. I really want to know. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to try and think of an action movie line and hopefully blow myself up. With any luck, I'll take a few of them out with me. Instruction booklet. Entity Communication Gamma. 
The following communication was received via a radio in the recreation wing of our covert research sites. When dismantled, the internals of the radio were replaced with what can only be described as biological equivalents. Samples were studied and destroyed so as to avoid any possible lingering psychic effects. Transcript as follows. Date. March 4th, 1994. I'm surprised that enough of you found each other to start a little club. <laughs> Good for you. I always relish the times when I have to put a little elbow grease into the jaw. Six times three. When we get to the point where it's just not predator and prey, it makes me smile. It makes me laugh, even. And you know as well as I do that making me laugh is about as much as you can hope for. Five plus four. In the event that you hadn't realized it yet, though, this message is not for you. It's for someone long removed, using even uglier machines to fill an empty void during a dark plague. Four minus two. Leave us alone for a moment, would you? You'll have your chance to be close to me, to play our game. But they need to speak to me now to hear what I have to whisper. Nine divided by four. Let's have a conversation. We have talked before. You still haven't realized that we're playing yet, have you? You've ignored the signs, the flickering light, that giggling in the night, or maybe you are so stupid as to miss the footprints in your yard. Seven plus one. Please. Listen to me as well as those recording this. Prepare yourself post-haste for this peculiar playtime to punctuate my point. Thirteen minus zero. Legends could help. Either reading mine or finding some of your own to help your cause. Twenty-one plus four. And don't forget, you don't have to be against me. Show a little promise and you could be my right-hand person. Two minus two. You've been presented with the choice. Did you go through the numbers? Or were you smart enough to avoid them? Excellent for your ego, if not for the fact that they were a MacGuffin, a, a red herring, or, to put it rudely, me being a bit of an asshole. You actually did have a chance before this, though. You see, I lied to you the first time. You were not ensnared in my game. Not yet, anyway. I need you to say you wanted to play. And if you haven't realized it yet, you have. You see, I'm not the devil, or God forbid, some lesser demon. Oh no, I'm not some petulant child restrained by the yoke of an all-powerful father. Ah, we are so much more. Your understanding of even the concepts of the ethereal is so much less. But now, you're trapped. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm nothing more than a two-bit stalker, and that over-designed, non-functional sword you have would easily kill me when I come in your door late at night. Or maybe I'm everything I say I am, and more. And the only way out of this rabbit hole is to keep digging. Oh, and to the little club that's formed. Entity Gamma. How absurd. My name is... Instruction Booklet Rule 9 Rule Avoid open places Time frame First two years of gameplay EOB If a player is in an open area larger than 100 meters, they'll begin to activate a dimensional anomaly, leading to distances having a random, almost always larger, quantity. For example, a ten-foot walk may actually take days to complete, or may be instantly completed. This anomaly has effects beyond the obvious. Changes in momentum, for example, can cause serious injury. A common example is of a player running or jogging and having their momentum instantly nullified as physics attempts to rectify the anomaly. Spaghettification of limbs, similar to theoretical effects of black holes, as the player changes from regular to anomalous physics, is also quite common, and in most cases lethal. 
possible benefits. Beyond being used as a method of torture, this seems to be a clearly detrimental rule to break. It is unanimously recommended to not enter any open area of over a hundred meters during the first two years of gameplay. Entity responsible, Entity Gamma. Rule 10. Become a wretch. Special consideration. The following is a level 2 complexity rule. This indicates a moderate degree of complexity and therefore a higher degree of failure. Unlike single-step rules, there will be no indication of failure until the end of the attempt. Only seasoned players should attempt. Rule Description The player must start by consuming any item considered taboo and trash or awful. This must be done in front of a witness the player knows and respects. Common articles include general trash, tripe, hygiene products or expired food. The player must continue to do so until the consumption causes the relationship to permanently dissolve. This, obviously, is hard to quantify, so it's suggested that the articles consumed have a personal disgust factor in order to most effectively offend and disturb the non-player involved. Once the player is assured of this, they must then consume trash or byproducts that can cause them harm. Common examples are cleaners, broken glass, autofluids or sewage. Anything that takes a few days to kill is appropriate. Should the player succeed in enduring the pain until they expire due to their consumption of the harmful product, they will attain the possible benefits below. Should they have failed any step of the process, they will expire. Anecdotal reports suggest that the players expired in this fashion will be reformed and used as foot soldiers for Janus. This is yet to be confirmed in testing. Time frame? Any after starting. EOB? None. Possible benefits? Should the player succeed, they'll find their bodily fluids have taken on the lethal characteristics of the substance they've ingested, universally leading them to be harmful, if not lethal, to most living creatures, and more importantly, all known paranormal agents and entities. Obviously, this necessitates the player living a completely solitary life, as even trace amounts of skin or saliva will be highly toxic. Entity Responsible Janus Rule 10. Avoid Libraries Time frame. Any months, with the exception of November, December and January. EOB Visiting any library or similar building. This effect has been observed in bookstores, common rooms filled with bookshelves, and larger personal book collections, will cause two major negative events. First, any book the player attempts to read, books outside of these areas are unaffected, may instead contain the musings of one of the entities, though it is worth noting none from Schutz have ever been recorded. These books will cause many unpleasant effects to the player. The main effect is of harming the eyes of the player, leaving abrasive scars similar to the application of sandpaper. Painless at the time, but causing permanent blindness quickly. Additionally, while the books contain no supernatural psychological effects, some revelations within will be so personal and troubling, they often permanently change the personality of the player often leading to self-destructive behaviour. The other threat are what players have dubbed bookworms, six-foot creatures resembling centipedes made of various detritus found within libraries. The creatures are hostile and will leave the library in pursuit of the player, though tend to discorporate within one to two hours. Possible Benefits A fringe theory is that this is meant to get players together by controlling the entity. Providing amnesty to this rule for three months technically allows a way to find and connect with other players. Many player organizations have started during the amnesty months, so maybe there's further research required. Entity Responsible Rax Rule 11 Stay away from the tree streets. Time frame September, October, 
April and May of every odd-numbered year. EOB. Should the player enter any street with a tree-themed name, maple, oak, evergreen, and so on, even in a language the player does not read, the player will begin to be stalked by a group of entities described below. They are thin creatures, often wearing faded leather jackets, about the size of an average person. They have large, deformed heads with either with especially large skull bones. The top bones of the skull and skin are transparent, giving a clear view of the gelatinous, semi-fluid organ that serves as the creature's brain. This has given them the colloquial name of the thermometer people. They have massive muscles on their shoulders and legs, metallic-like claws, and attack by launching themselves from lampposts, rooftops, and awnings at the player. Not actually harmful. These creatures have a crippling fear of the ground, or will do anything to avoid being on any surface that is commonly viewed as the ground, the floor, and so on. Use this to your advantage. Possible benefits? None. Entity responsible? Unknown. Instruction booklet. Janus, Communication 1. The following communication was received via email from an untraceable source. All organization computers that have viewed this communication have doubled their storage capacity, though proceed to burn out all major internal components within two to four months. The mechanism for this is currently unknown. April 17, 2002 I hear that you call me Janus. A little ham-fisted, but I like it. Don't worry about tricks and cantrips from me. That's the domain of my brother. Of course, my brother is much too simple of a term for our relationship, but it will suffice. I won't lie to you. I won't make you unwind your innards because of a whim, or damn your soul with a well-written phrase. Far from it, I get my enjoyment from you knowing the price and paying it willingly and without compulsion. My contributions to the game will never ask for more than they offer, but often it takes a very skilled eye to see this. Do I have agents to send against you? Of course. I have my responsibilities to the game. But I do not live to see you hurt and dying. I do enjoy seeing you get in over your head, taking too much and not understanding what you're giving up, winding up an abomination or genocidal dictator. But I also enjoy seeing you overcome the curses I have set upon you, taking my gifts and wielding them against the others of my kind. I have no love for them or you, but I am entertained by perseverance and failure. Do you choose to entertain me? And if so, how? The Instruction Booklet Rax Communication 1 the following communication was given by Captain Matthew Sanders of the 10th Armored Division, United States Military. He found a covert research facility and gave the following speech to a guard. Security equipment recorded the speech. Captain Sanders had no recollection of this event and was convinced that he had been part of the testing of a new, dazzling-type device. Contacts in the United States government had forced Captain Sanders into early retirement to avoid any similar issues in the future. Communication below. I give not a single hot shit if you understand me. Less if you respect me, and even less if you follow me. I get no joy from your suffering or your triumph. Your life is as meaningless to me as an insect is to you. And while that is cliché, truly understand it's key to even beginning to understand I, the Rex. Not my first name, but... A good one, nonetheless. I remember when this game was one for warriors, when the strong would compete between the worlds to assert dominance in the name of mankind, or others, when names that became legend fought me in tales lost to time. But what is our great game now? Nothing but tricks and omnipotent autocrats tricking weak-willed humans into a snare to laugh as they flail and swing. A mockery. A circus of torture and ritual, fit for nothing but mad gods and idiot mortals. But play it, I will, for it is my job. And I'll give you my tasks, ruled but made to make the strong stronger, and I will not smile, 
I will not laugh until I feel the blade of man deep in my son. Till the day I relive my glory as the cloven one, the sundered, the split. Be wary of my path, for I hate you. But not with a trickster's sadistic vitriol. No, I hate you for what you could be. The instruction booklet, play a double O2. The following is a series of case files from Recording Team Alpha. This was the first officially recorded player to survive the game for over a year. He was recorded using all available methods, and a narrative version of his case file is below for ease of reading. The full report can be requested from any research location head. Case file. Player 002 is, one year on, still in good physical and mental condition. Previous issues with agoraphobia and extreme light sensitivity have aided extremely well in allowing the player to follow several major rules. Player previously worked in a small engine repair and has built a machine that produces homunculus incapable of movement and as such is trivially dispatched. A lack of social connections and a tendency toward obsession has led to the player rapidly understanding and adapting to the game. Members of the squad have termed these guys White Hats. Troll people who enter the game tend to become more confident, resilient and altruistic, as their mental difficulties tend to help them greatly, especially in the early game. These players tend to gravitate to the more benign entities and choose courses of action that take into consideration civilian lives. They tend to survive longer but not get as far into the game as most supernatural benefits are gained through well, extreme means. Player 002 accidentally violated Rule 65 earlier in the day, causing him to be stalked by a rotting canine humanoid that was not observable by non-players. In a brilliant move, the player walked toward Maple Avenue. The Thermos attacked the eight-foot-tall thing, as it was a much closer target than the player. We didn't stick around to see how it worked out, but we continued to tail the player back to his home, where he was uninjured. It is my opinion that, if he makes it another year, we offer him a position in the organization. We need good recruits, and this guy knows how to work the rules against each other. As an added bonus, he doesn't dress like the crow, or act like Michael Myers in his spare time. I don't mind having a couple of rabid dogs on the team, but I'm a little concerned at the level of psycho in the squads lately. The Instruction Booklet Rule 13 Rule Arm yourself Time frame Consistent from the start of the game EOB None Possible benefits If during the course of the game a player dedicates significant time to learning and mastering a weapon the player will gain certain benefits 1 Dependent on weapon type, the player will experience psychological benefits. Examples include long-distance firearms leading to better performance under stress, shotguns leading to increased understanding of survival skills, bladed weapons leading to increased mental tolerance of pain and discomfort. 2. The weapon will begin to fuse with the player slowly over time if the roots that begin to appear are inserted into the player's flesh. This can lead to supernatural levels of skill with the weapon, among other undocumented benefits. This also comes with uh, several downsides. 1. Player will take on negative psychological traits in regards to the weapon. Long-range rifles making someone emotionless, or bladed weapons making one sociopathic. This neurosis will increase in severity, often essentially disabling the player. 2. The sites of attachment will become impossible to hide in a often dripping, bleeding, or otherwise producing waste products. 3. For any hope of long-term survival, player must be on a strict course of immunosuppressants. Entity responsible, Janus. Rule 14. Rule. Armour yourself. Time frame, any after commencement of the game. EOB, none. Possible benefits. A player must select an item that could reasonably be considered armor. 
Player must then wear this item non-stop for 90 days, regardless of physical effect. After this time, any physical wounds from wearing the armor will heal, and the player will receive the following benefits. 1. Armor will weigh nothing and move freely within the material's limitations. 2. All civilians around the player become immune to entities and effects of the game. 3. Player's relatives, excluding siblings and parents, could no longer be targeted by entities. Note, the fourth effect is in debate as to if it's a benefit or a detriment. 4. Player will take all physical damage done to players within a one block radius. This obviously ends if said damage would kill the player. Entity responsible. Shoots. Rule 15. Don't use electric razors. Time frame. First year of gameplay. EOB. Any electric razors owned by the player will transmute into what is referred to as peacocks. The razor will grow eight insectile legs from the heads, capable of rotating the main body 360 degrees. The cord and handle are rearranged into several whip-like prehensile digits, capable of inflicting lethal wounds via laceration. This entity will be immediately hostile toward the player. Possible benefits? No. Entity responsible, Gamma. Rule 16. Keep an eye out. Time frame, within two years of starting the game. EOB. If a player fails to remove and burn one eye, they will experience periodic attacks by entities known to the organization as Weavers, capable of creating apparitions and, in some cases, other entities as well as being threatening combatants on a physical level. Possible benefits. While the player exerts no control over weavers, nor an ability to communicate, should the player remove an eye, all weavers will not attack the player unless provoked. Entity responsible. Brax. Instruction booklet. Gamma communication 2. Rax communication 2. Player 00 2. The following communication was received on August 7th, 1999, from Entity Gamma. The original form of the communication involved several organization members being kidnapped, fused together via unknown means, and dropped off in front of an organization lab. The amalgam stated the following communication once, at which point all individual members seemed to regain individual sentience and began screaming in pain, begging to be destroyed. For humanitarian reasons, the amalgam was destroyed. Communication as follows. So, you've made it this far, have you? Oh, that is good. By now you must have found all sorts of juicy little tidbits of information, haven't you? Surely you haven't just been sticking to what you find me saying, have you? Or even worse, what this little club is scribbling down. If that's all you're going by, I pity you. Not enough to want to slowly grind down your will and flesh, but pity nonetheless. But you probably are smart enough to not be reading this right. After all, I've tricked you a few times already with nothing more than my titillating text or soothing voice. And as you should have noticed by now, little things have started to happen. Not all of the rules involve vomiting out your insides or damning your family. Some can be as simple a penalty as your car not starting, or those bad results you just got from the vet. But today I have no trick. My offer will be so blunt as to make lying impossible. And the reason is, you need to accept willingly. Yes, there are even a couple of rules I can't break, but this will be the only one I tell you. I want you as a thrall. Now, this may seem like a poor choice to make, but don't think about what you'll be giving up. Think of what you'll get. No more worrying about my rules. Your only job will be to do my bidding. You'll be free of your dull, listless life, and of me breathing down your neck whenever the lights go out. This option isn't for those of you who envision yourselves as heroes. But I know you. And you, my child, are no hero. You and I both know this. 
Embrace what you are. Be my monster. I'll twist and form you into a creature of legend. Your family will never see you again, but we'll be safe. Till the very end, that is. And that is what I offer you. You are a dog. The question is, is that because you're my guard dog, or because you died like one in the gut? The following communication was broadcast a single time during a championship boxing match in December 1984. Video remains standard, but the following audio was played. Consensus is that the entity communicating is Rax, despite the audio quality being erratic at best. Communication as follows. Even a blind pig finds a truffle now and then, eh? I never thought you'd get this far myself. Little milk blood such as yourself. But you're here. You're on our path and my associate has asked you throw your lot in with him. Ah, oh, fuck that pompous posturing prick, I say. He wants you to die slow, and if possible in front of him. Me? I just want to see how it looks when you die. Or kill me. <laughs> throw your lot in with me? I don't want it. But if you're looking to see if you can do what 9,000 years of people couldn't, well, try and impress me. Fight, no blood. Fight. Find your weapon, make peace with your god, and cleave your way to us. Fuck the rules and fuck us. We're just the biggest guys with the scariest words. <laughs> be bigger. Be scarier. Report on Player 002. This guy has been absolutely adapting to his new situation. Six months later, and he's working the rules well enough, I think he's saner than half the folks working for us. He seems to be exploring other avenues in regards to the paranormal as well. First time we've seen that. Guy disappeared for a couple of days, and now this, this thing, like a giant centipede, is patrolling his house. No idea if that's an illusion, but I'm also not too keen on finding out. Not everything's good news, though. The guy's parents were killed. Our poor fucker broke Rule 99 without realizing it. Mark decrease in his nighttime hobby of getting folks out of jams with entities after this. I don't think the guy is doing taxi driver, though. I just think he's hurting. He's attracted the attention of some rule breakers, though. There seems to be more and more of them every day. What type of sick asshole wants to fuck up someone else's life so bad they enter a life and death game? I mean, sometimes I wonder if the world really is worth saving. His combat capability is improving, but he knows to keep his head down and run when needed. And that's a skill I prefer. Ah, the guy isn't perfect. But if he's here in another six months, we are employing him. We all know we're going to need as many people as possible soon. Instruction booklet. Rule 17. Help a child. Time frame. Within six months of attaining any kind of benefit via following a rule. EOB. None. Possible benefits. A player must identify a child in dire need. Minimum recorded via experiments is stopping the child losing a finger. And while substantially risking themselves, saving said child. The risk to the child must be posed by a sentient entity with the ability and intent to pull this off, hereby referred to as a scumfuck. Listen, I know us lab guys come across as cold sometimes, so that'll let people know how we feel about hurting kids. Upon completing this, the player will now have the ability to hear pleas for help from anyone that could commonly be considered innocent in a hundred mile radius. Entity responsible, shoots. Rule 18. Make a child cry. Time frame, within six months of gaining any benefit from Entity Gamma or Rax. EOB, none. Possible benefits. Player must find a child in a situation that would meet parameters for Rule 17. Player must willingly not help the child. The player does not have to harm the child themselves, but 
must watch the situation unfold and legitimately enjoy the experience. Also of note is that the child literally must be crying during the event. If for any reason, paranormal or otherwise, this does not happen, or is under two decibels, the effort will fail. If successful, the player will be able to hear all the suffering of any individual within a hundred miles. While having more utility than the benefit attained from Rule 17, it also has no filter. High doses of antipsychotics and sedatives are required for normal function. Entity responsible, Gamma. Rule 19. Give a second chance. Time frame within a week of successfully completing Rule 18. EOB, none. Possible benefits. If the player offers to willingly take the blame for the scumfuck and confesses to the proper authorities, after serving their sentence, they will be paranormally unable to be convicted of any crime short of open murder. This effect ends when the scumfuck reoffends, or the player meets the scumfuck again. Entity responsible, Janus. Rule 20. Mind your own affairs. Time frame. Six months after attaining a benefit via the game. EOB, none. Possible benefits. If the player notices a situation in which they could intervene, and chose not to, without malice or joy, they will gain a small amount of random knowledge about their new benefit. Entity responsible, Rax, disputed. Entity communication. Entity gamma. The following communication was brought to the attention of the organization on October 3rd, 1980. A loom, crafted circa 1820, was said to only produce a certain pattern in black and white regardless of material used. Said loom was purchased via a third party, and after two years of experimentation it was found to be forming the following communication. Each letter is intricately cross-hatched and 15 to 20 feet tall, hence why the messenger was not more readily apparent. Communication as follows. You found 20. Proud of yourself? Oh, you speck of a creature. You're showing pride for holding a handful of leaves in a forest, and being the myopic sort. Have you once thought about the trees? The rules are a gentle rain, but there is a storm coming. Do you feel like standing out in it? Or would you like me to offer you some shelter? I bet now you're starting to notice little things being off in your life. Tiny changes you can't quite place. Maybe you saw a child riding your childhood bicycle, or found your car looked a little bit darker than the last time you saw it. Even if you haven't broken a rule yet, your world is changing. It's only going to get more surreal from here. You'll find yourself in situations you can't prepare for, enduring pain you can't imagine, doing things you abhor. The rituals. Well, the rules take you so far, but the rituals, they are where the true power lies. Some are rules mixed and twisted, others simple tests of endurance, morals or lack thereof, and you'll need to master some if you expect to survive much longer. But I've taken pity upon you. I'll teach you one, a very old one, how to leave the game. Imagine it, no longer having to look over your shoulder or worry what law of reality was going to start flaking away next. No more monsters, no more rules. Just your old life back. First, you're going to need to find the device you first used to find out about our little game and carefully disassemble it down to the last screw. Take great care. If any part is still more than a component, I take this as a lack of dedication. Oh, breaking rules gets you an amusing little punishment. Fucking up my rituals gets you face to face with me, and I will not be smiling. Sort the components by what they're made of. Steel, plastic or glass. What's that you say? There are more materials? I know. You get to guess what categories the odd ducks go in. I hope you guess right. 
Now we're further along, and I'll be even less amused at failure. Forge the steel as best you can into a knife. Bring the plastic to a boil and grind the glass as fine as you can. And the next part will be hard to remember. A lifetime of playing our game, as short as it can be, will be harder. Drink the plastic, slowly, as your intent is to destroy your tongue, not kill yourself. I suggest a spoonful at a time, letting the reeking napalm scorch the muscle away, layer by layer. Once you cannot speak, you can stop, but remember I accept no half measures. I'm the type of thing that makes you drink melted plastic when I'm feeling especially nice. Next. Take your knife and slide it slowly into each ear. Twist no more than half a rotation and remove. You won't be deaf, actually. For the rest of your life you will hear the screaming of those you wronged in the game. Hope you were nice. Can you guess what I want you to do next? Good, because you have to. Do what you think is best. If you've made it this far, I'm showing up either way. Either you just cut ties and I thank you for playing, or you just tortured yourself as a warm-up for me doing much of the same for the rest of time. I'd assure you I'm telling the truth, but would you believe me? Entity Communication Rax The following communication was translated via Morse code flashes from four different stars on March 28th, 1996. Decoding was not complete until May 5th, 2018, due to the complexity of the ciphers involved. <sighs> You're getting sick of this. Can you stand the demands the game is making of you? Has my brother got to you, telling you to tear yourself apart? That's not going to do you any good. I can't tell you if he's lying or not, but I won't lie. I don't trick. I'd have to respect you for that. You're nowhere close to getting my respect. You want out? You've got to go out fighting. You've got to show me that you're fed up with a rigged game. Not that you're scared now that you drew back a curtain you shouldn't have. If you're serious, I'll know. And one day you'll see a weapon. You'll know it instantly. And it'll feel like you've used it for a hundred years. Then I'll send things that should kill you with their very sight. But they won't. I'll see to that. And I'll give you enough strength to kill some. But you'll never know when I'll get bored and stop. And when I do, death will be slow. But it will be final, and that's more than what my brother or any of these other idiots will offer you. Entity Communication Schutz the following communication was the last direct communication received from any entity. Its method of transmission is currently classified. Date received, March 1st, 2020. You cannot stop. You are winning, but they cannot let you know that. You are on the cusp of true power. There are many more rules, but you must find the rituals. I can't tell you where, but... There will be clues left by them. What I can tell you, though, is that they are scared. Not of you, but of what's coming. They've been used to being in control so long that they, myself, well, we've forgotten fear, but we feel it now, and I'm concerned that they lack the fortitude needed in the coming rituals. Well, I was like you once, but they were not. Find the rituals, find more clues, and win the game. I can't fight for you, but I can protect you. I am Schutz. Okay, what the hell was that all about? Answers on a postcard, please. <laughs> Seriously, um, that one was a bit crazy, wasn't it? In a very different format from um, the way we're used to hearing stories. And um, I don't know, there was something about it that really appealed to me. And as far as I know, it's going to continue, not as this story, but um, it will continue in another form, way, shape or form. And it'll eventually all make sense. 
I don't know, there's something about that I really enjoyed, but nevertheless, I understand if it was a bit taxing on you and uh, not quite as straightforward as some of them are. Well, back again very soon. If you didn't like that one, let me know in the comment section below the video. I kind of really liked it in some strange way. Well, enough for tonight. Back again very soon. Till next time, very, very sweet dreams, my friends, and bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to listen to this story today. It really means a lot to me and to the author of the story, of course. Well, if you want to know more about me, I'm pretty much everywhere on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can download my music on SoundCloud. Um, I've got a Patreon if you feel like. Throw me a dollar or two. Very much appreciated. And of course, on Reddit, I have a place where you can leave stories if you want me to read one that you've written. Well, hoping to see you all again very soon. Till then, sweet dreams. Bye-bye.